the prayers that opens door, the prayer that brings blessing, the prayer that gives us victory over our enemies, the prayer that opens our spiritual blessings and make them to come to us. Because every Thursday we are here to pray. But our prayer here is not just to come and entertain ourselves and go. Our prayers here is to come and equip ourselves and be spiritually loaded so that when we get out there in our place of business or in our houses, we can demonstrate the power of God. We can show the world that we are truly who we call ourselves. A child of God can never be seen as a child of God until you manifest those things that make up God himself. A child of God in the midst of the unbelievers is not a child of God until he manifests the qualities of God in his or her life. A child of God is not powerful until that child of God demonstrates the power of his Father, God Almighty. And so you can be a child of God and a believer, but you are lacking a lot of things in your life. And so me preparing you with this message this morning is to quickly equip you because definitely you are going to conquer all your enemies in the name of Jesus. You are going to conquer all your enemies in the name of Jesus. Amen. Turn with me to the book of James chapter 5 verse number 14. He said, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. 15. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord raise him up, and if he have committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. 16. Confess your fault one to another, and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Praise God. Hallelujah. And then 17, he said, Elijah was a man subject to like passion as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Verse 18. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Praise Master Jesus. I'm taking it from where it says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. In other words, the prayer of the believers are answered. They does a lot of things. If a believer will understand the kind of prayer that God wants us to pray, the way we need to pray, and the way we should take our prayers, not just a believer praying, but a believer should understand that there are ways we need to pray and receive answer to our prayers. I know that so many uh, uh, lectures or so many messages or preaching has been given over the years about this very prayer that brings answer or prayer that brings blessings. I know that many of us has been under uh, the tutorship of a lot of men of God and they have taught us several ways we need to pray and several ways we must pray our prayer to receive answer. But I have a different thing altogether to present to you so that you will know that prayer is not what people think they are. Because I've seen a lot of people that don't sleep in the night. Every night they must start from 12 uh, a.m. 12 midnight. They will pray to you five. Every day by day. Every day by day. Every day by day. And such prayer, I expect that such a prayer should be able to, 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 to move the whole mountains in the world. But such prayer, they will pray it at the end of it all, nothing to show for. 
So child of God is important that we begin to look at ourselves. How do we now begin to pray? This portion of the Bible I read has opened everything to us. But our understanding about what the scripture is saying will help us a lot. Because prayer before you open your mouth to pray, God already knows what you want to pray for. As a child of God, before you say, Father, oh, heal me, God already knows that you need healing. So how are you going to pray for your healing to come? Number one, faith. Faith. Faith is what Jesus was teaching the people and he said to them, if you have faith, you will say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. He said the mountain will be removed and cast into the sea. But if you don't have faith, even if you say to the mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, mountain will not move because you don't have the faith. Now, the faith aspect, how do we know what is called faith? Because most of the times we read it about faith, 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 faith. Faith is not how we read it. Faith is acceptance that this is already done. Faith means to accept that it is done the way you want it. Faith is to agree that something has been settled. The Bible says, can two work together? Two cannot work together except they what? They agree. If God says, I'm going to do a miracle in your life, I'm going to bless you. If you don't agree with God, the blessing will never come. So faith there is that you have to agree to whatever you want to say or you want to pray. Whatever you want to ask, whatever you want to desire, before you desire it, before you pray it, before you seek for it, you have to first of all agree. That's why in the book of Hebrews 11, the Bible started talking about faith. And he said, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because when you don't agree, God will never be happy. Because God said, I will do, but you did not agree in faith with God, then God will be angry. What normally makes God not to be happy is because we don't agree with him. If I say, I'm going to jump from here to here, and I agree with God, before I jump, God has already made the jumping easy for me. If I say, oh Lord, I'm going to be healed, I need my healing now, I need to agree first, even before I open my mouth to talk about my healing. Because God does not lack the power to heal you. God does not lack the power to prosper you. God does not lack the power to make a way for you. God does not lack the power to supply to you. God does not lack the power to give you what you're asking for. But what makes it impossible is our unbelief. We never believe it can be done. And unbelief is one of the greatest weapons of the devil to dislodge, to hinder, and to stop many people's prayer. But today, God will give you grace to receive grace to also begin to believe God in every ramification in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The devil can never overcome you anymore. Amen. For the light of God will continually shine in your life to give you next level of your victory in Jesus name. Amen. So, the number one I say is faith. The faith which has to do with agreement with God. Which has to do with believing that God will do it. Which has to do with you accepting it first before you begin to pray. Anything you know that you will not accept, don't pray it. Because when you are praying it, it's like you are trying to argue with God or struggle with God. Whatever you know that you are not going to believe, don't ever try to pray, pray it. Because you praying it means that you are trying to force something you don't agree. Yeah, I, I, want to, I want to go this way. And you don't agree to go this way. It will be confusing. You want to go like this. Your mind says, no, I don't want to go. You want to go, I don't want to go. How will it work? It will never work. So the prayer that brings blessings on our way is the prayer of faith. That is why he made it very clear here. He said, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. 
The same way the prayer of faith will bring blessings. The same way the prayer of faith will bring money. The same way the prayer of faith will open the doors. When Peter was fishing and fished all through the night and caught nothing, at the sighting of the Lord Jesus, the Bible said Peter allowed Jesus to make use of the boat. At the end of it all, Jesus said to Peter, cast thy net by the right hand side for a draught. Peter said one thing that would have stopped the whole thing. Peter said, ah, Lord, all through the night I have toiled all this water. Because night is always the time that fish go out to fish as many as can because they see that the weather is calm, no noise anywhere. The fishes will come out in the night to begin to go for their feeding and begin to get whatever they want. So I have toiled in the night and I caught nothing. So it is not a good time for somebody to fish. And Jesus said to Peter, cast thy net. Peter said, at thy word, at thy word, I will cast the net. Because you have said it, let me try what you have said. And the Bible have it that when Peter casted the net, the net was so filled up that Peter's net began to break. To a point, it began to beckon on people to come. And that takes us to number two. Number two says, word of God. Praying by the word of God. Number two way you can get your blessings in prayers is to pray by the word of God. To pray by the word of God. Many people are called the children of God, but they never believe in what God said. They look at it, ah, but this word God is saying is very, uh, is, is not, is not right. I don't think it's supposed to be. Love your enemies and pray for your enemies. Uh, uh, how can I love my enemies and pray for my enemies? Enemies that want to kill me, how can I love them? How can I pray for my enemies? You will hear such a word and you will say, no, 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 I don't want to pray for my enemy. No, 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 how can? You know what he did to me? But the scripture says, pray for your enemies. It is the word of God. The word of God says, pray for your enemy. Because by so doing, even if you don't know, he explained it. He said, by praying for your enemies, you are bringing the coal of fire on their head. Somebody is busy going about. Say, ah, that woman, I want her to die. What is this? I don't want to see her. I don't want to, she no go succeed. This man no go succeed. As he's busy going there, we are praying, God, I hand her over to you, God. Forgive her. God, take control. God, do this. As you are praying that prayer, God looks at your prayer and says, no, such a wickedness cannot come to this person. This is a righteous person. I cannot allow this person to harm my daughter. And when they now propose evil, the evil they propose now backfire them. And that is where the scripture now took us back. He said, for the fervent, the effectual prayer of the righteous man are very much. You are now seen as a righteous person because the way they are taking it is not the way you are taking it. Your own way is quite different. So you have to listen to what God is saying about every situation you want to pray about. You want to pray to eliminate and end poverty in your life. Then you have to listen. What is God saying about poverty? What is God saying about financial open door? What is the word of God saying about me in times of financial open door? What am I doing and what is the word of God saying about what I'm doing? Then you kill yourself there. You begin to pray that way. You begin to speak the word of God into your life, into your business, into your finance, into your destiny. You begin to declare the word of God in everything that your hand is touching. You begin to declare the word that will change your story and change your life and change your future. Not the word when you come to pray, you lack the word of God. When you come to pray, no faith. When you come to pray, you don't have the word in your mouth. You don't even know that God said anything about you. You don't even try to hold God by his word. Then you go out as a businessman, you put your business there and nobody is coming to buy. And then you fold your hands and you go back home and say, ah, no customer today. No. The Bible says something about it. 
When men are saying there's no customer, you as a person, you know what God said. You'll be saying there is customer. Don't speak on the direction of those that doesn't know God. Your own way should go on the direction of the word of God concerning your life. Then you are sick and your sickness, you are trying to, you know, walk about to buy medicine to go to hospital and the sickness refused to go and you want to accept it the way other people are accepting it. Oh, that sickness is too tough. I don't think this kind of sickness, it used to hold somebody for one week. No. No, oh, the sickness has held me. I am too weak. I cannot stand up. I cannot make a move. I cannot even do anything. No, that's not what you should be saying. There's something the Bible says about the sick. Let the sick say, I am healed. And let the weak say, I am strong. You have to begin to counter it with the word of God as you are praying. You are using the word of God to pray and counter whatever situation. That is where your victory comes. That is where everything you are looking for comes. That is why I keep on telling people, I say, for you to take your right, your right is not uh, federal government say when you are driving, you should do like this, or they say this is, your right is what God has already said about you as a child of God. So when we understand what God has said about us and we are willing and ready to follow the way God has already said it about us and use it to pray and use it to pursue our future, then you will see what happens. Somebody comes to work and say, oh, this brother, you, today I terminate your work. You are not going to work in this company again. I terminate your work. <laughs> is that what God is saying? That you are terminated? Your work is terminated? So when he says you terminate your work, what are you using to follow it up? So somebody now is praying and asking God, I need the fruit of the womb, I need the baby. And you are seeing yourself, it is actually the devil is at work oppressing you. And you don't know there's something God has said about it. You don't know there's a word that God has said about it. Now God said that none shall be barren in the house of the Lord. Why not go to the word of God and hold God by his word? The Lord said, remind me my word and hold me by my word. When you are praying, you remind God his word concerning your life. And you are sick. The devil has held you bound to a point. You are about to give up. You don't know that word of God says, I shall not die. But live to declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living. I have to live to declare the works of the Lord. Remember the king that uh, Isaiah went to and told the king to prepare his house and he's going to die. And the king said, okay, man of God, you are welcome. Thank you for the message. God bless you. Bye-bye. And the man of God left. And the king went back to God. And he said, God, you don't see all the work I've done for you. Look at what I've done for you. I've not finished the work. I need to, I need to continue the good work of the Lord. I need to put things in order. I need to do this. You cannot send the man of God to come and tell me that I'm going to die. He never argued with Isaiah. But he knows his right in the word of God and what God said about the righteous. And they begin to move on the world to hammer God on what God has said. And all of a sudden, God is sent back Elijah, uh, Isaiah. Say, go back to that man. The man you give message now, go back to him. Tell him I've added 15 years more. Hallelujah. Somebody hallelujah.